it's Christy here from version of you 2.0 and listen I won't take too much of your time but I wanted to jump in here because I was really inspired based off of a conversation that I'd had um, I've actually had this very same conversation with a number of you I would say within the last three weeks and so I think you know there's a trend there and I think it's worth my addressing so I hope that this offers you some value and if it does, I'd love for you to comment if it, um, you know, percolates and you've got questions as a result, always feel free to reach out to me. Okay, so I'm accessible to you. So what I wanted to talk to you about was prioritizing ourselves. So oftentimes, you know, we are willing to put everybody else ahead of ourselves. And to be really honest with you, I don't know how much we realize we're doing that until we're so exhausted that we just can't continue to move at the pace in which we're moving and that's when we reflect oh gosh i've been doing so much lately you know geez the last couple weekends i've been driving the kids to all of these tournaments you know work's been really busy you know i've been trying to deal with x y and z and i'm just so tired you know i think i might just take this sunday afternoon and just relax and it's typically those types of scenarios where when Sunday afternoon comes and we're kind of reflecting on these things that, that, that we realize that we really haven't given ourselves permission throughout that time period to take care of ourselves. Now listen, I firmly believe that there's no such thing as balance. I'm just throwing it out there. I, I do, you know, I would be a hypocrite if I told you that you could balance your work life and you could balance your, um, you know, your social life and your love life and your home life. And if you figured it out, then you need to let me know. But here's what I coach. I coach quality over quantity. And the reason I coach quality over quantity is because I am somebody who still likes to people please. I am somebody who still can be a perfectionist in some areas. I am somebody who still will drive myself into the ground and ignore my body in order to get to whatever the end result will be. So because I know this in myself, I'm an expert in helping you not to be because I'm an expert in consistently working on my own journey in trying to achieve quality over quantity okay and I am getting better at it I still have moments but I'm getting better at it and what I want you to understand is a couple things when you prioritize yourself what you're doing is you're filling your bucket back up you're filling your soul you're motivating and inspiring yourself you're creating this level of energy that otherwise if you didn't prioritize yourself you wouldn't be able to give to others and knowing that most of us are really about servicing others we're, we're always interested in giving others and giving compliments and helping out in any way we can and oftentimes we're not really good receivers if you give yourself permission to make yourself a priority for even like an hour a day and I know it sounds like a lot but it doesn't have to be 60 minutes in one time it could be 10 minutes here half an hour here you know another half an hour somewhere else or if you can give yourself 60 minutes a day out of your full day of a wakefulness think of how much more how much of the best of you that you could give to somebody else and the other thing that I want you to consider is this Oftentimes we attach shame and guilt when we feel like we're disappointing somebody else. And, and remember, that's a perception. So unless somebody comes to you and says, oh, you know what, you really disappointed me here. Unless they say that to you, your assumption is that you're going to disappoint them. Okay? So we're already living and making decisions based on lies because we don't know what the outcome is going to be. Um, but also we live in this shame and guilt in then not taking care of ourselves 
you know, oh, you know, I didn't go to the gym. That's three times this week. I ate a piece of bread. I shouldn't have had the bread. You know, I was really hungry and I really wanted the cereal at night and I ate the cereal and now I feel terrible for it and blah, 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 blah. So we literally punish ourselves. We punish ourselves because we feel like we haven't given enough of us, even though we've overextended ourselves. And then we punish ourselves because we haven't given enough of ourselves back to ourselves because we've overextended ourselves. There's no win in that situation. Would you agree? So 60 minutes a day where you can replenish some of your reserve. It's not gonna be all of your reserve, but at least it's some of your reserve. And when you can kind of get in the habit of doing that, you start to appreciate of what this is doing to your body, what this is doing to your mindset, how much of the quality of you comes out as a result. And then maybe, just maybe, you're gonna be willing to spend a little bit more time in taking care of yourself. Because again, it's not about the quantity of time you spend with people, the quantity of time uh, to get something done, but it's the quality of time. When is it that you best function in a day? It's probably not eight hours. You probably have four or five solid hours that you could dedicate to work, right? So is there permission that you can be completely focused in that four or five hours of work to complete eight hours of work? right? Knowing that we're high performers and we can do that while also still being able to find some time in there to re-energize ourselves, to take care of ourselves in some way. And the last thing that I want to bring up is about the free workshop that I'm going to be offering. And what I need you to understand about this free workshop is that it actually speaks to all of this stuff. What I need you to understand about this free workshop and why it's so important to me that you attend is that it's okay if you don't work out at six o'clock in the morning. It's okay if you decide to eat the piece of bread and it tastes really good and you enjoy it. Because although we want food in moderation, the way that our unique bodies work is that we do receive reward from food. Not all of us, not all body types appreciate food in the same way. But if you give yourself shit because you're appreciating having this sandwich because there's bread and you didn't use lettuce, but your body appreciates you being able to have the bread, how good would it be for you to know that from a health perspective, it's okay for you? that you can reward yourself with food within parameters, within reason, and not feel guilty about it. That it's okay that you're not the type of person that has to get up at five o'clock in the morning and work really hard at six o'clock in the morning. How many of you give yourself shit when you don't give your best performance in those early morning workouts? Where you're like, I just can't do it today. Wouldn't it be nice to know a little bit more about your unique archetype to know what works best for you so you can stop guilting yourself and shaming yourself to do things that otherwise your body would appreciate it done differently? You still get to exercise and you can still exercise at six o'clock in the morning if that's what works best for your schedule. But what if you could do it differently and it actually served your body? What if you could do it differently and you were able to balance your hormones? What if you could do it differently and not give yourself shit for it? Would that be of interest to you? Yeah, I got goosebumps. I think you would benefit from this very much. Anyway, here's to showing up for you. Have yourself a fantastic day. Bye.